This episode of Grip Tips has been brought to you by M Squared Studio, and if you'd like to help out the channel, you can visit my Patreon page. I'll leave a link in the description below. We're back. We're back. I'm Dave Downson. Welcome back to Grip Tips. Today's episode is an exciting one because for the first time ever, I finally got to touch an airy sky panel. Jumping right into the kit, we first see that we have our power cables, which is a power con cable, uh, and that's for the ballast to connect to our power source, and an XLR cable to connect to the head. As big as this light was, it was actually pretty light, weighing in around 30 pounds with the ballast attached, and uses a junior pin to head up on a stand, much like the low boy that I'm using here. I really dug the design of the case because the ballast had its own compartment, uh, directly under the light and hidden away underneath like this foam insert that easily just pulls away and then the ballast itself also had a handle to grab onto it. So on one side of the ballast is where all of your power connections lie and there's also this blue rocker switch to turn it on and off. Then looking at the back of the light, you can see we have DMX and LAN ports on one side and then on the other side, we also have AC and DC power ports. We'll first take our female end of the XLR and plug it into the back of the light on the AC power port, then come back and plug our male end into the ballast and then we can take our main power line, open up the port for the PBG cable where it basically just slides in and you turn it until it snaps into place. There's only one way to do it. Then obviously after that, it's just plugging in a stinger like any other light and flipping the blue switch. I spent basically a half hour just playing with all of the dials and I, even though I had never touched one of these before, it was super easy to navigate through their menus once I learned how all of the knobs worked. And the crazy amount of things that you can do with this light is just, it's just amazing. I, like, I'm not gonna go into detail of what you can do with this light because this episode would be kind of like an hour long if I did, but I will show you a few of the main things. Like first and foremost, we have total control of the intensity down to a 10th of a percentage. We can also change our color temperature from anywhere between 2,800 degrees to 10,000 degrees. We can also plus or minus green if we choose to. And if we hit the mode button again, we have a complete control of our hue and the knob next to it will actually control our saturation. Let's hit the mode button again and it takes us into a complete list of gels that you can choose from, whether it's from Lee filters or if you take the middle knob and twist it to the left, you now have a selection of Roscoe gels. This is an absolutely awesome feature because now there's absolutely no reason to gel this light. The amount of gels that is on there, the list just goes on forever. Hitting the mode button again, we are now in source mode, which has a ton of presets like gas fire, mobile phone, traffic lights, etc., etc. We can also choose what type of globe we are trying to imitate, like incandescence, halogens, HMIs, or if you wanna create your own RGB light color, you can dial through all the channels and create something completely custom and then save it as a preset of your own. And you can do this up to 20 different presets. They also have a special section called lighting effects, which are factory preset effects. And these are everything from party effect to clouds passing, or my personal favorite, the cop car. And all of these effects can also be controlled further within the effect itself. Like I can change the rhythm of the cop car flashes or the speed and saturation within party mode. So now that's all well and fine, but what if we have a sky panel on a Mambo combo and we raise it 20 feet in the sky and the DP wants to keep trying different things? Well, it would be kind of a pain in the ass if you had to bring the light down, make a small adjustment, raise it back up again, except they thought of that too. They actually have a remote that can be purchased separately so that you could still have complete control from afar. So really good job there. Also, let's say you don't want the ballast on the ground. They thought of that too. They made this like special bracket system that just slides onto the back of the light and clamps down and the ballast itself can now be attached to the back of the light. So it's kind of like you have an all-in-one solid unit. Now let's say you wanted to also put on some sort of bigger softbox, uh, some sort of other different type of diffusion. Uh, they've actually thought of that too. They made their own rectangular speed ring system and it's super simple to install. You first unlock the top of the light with these pull tabs that just snap into the unlock position and then the top of the frame just folds away on like this hinge system. And then the speed ring can line up with the slots and slide into position. Then you can fold the frame back close and lock it so that it can't fall out. And after that, it's just putting on the soft box like any other with the tent poles and adding any diffusion of your choice to give a bigger source 
or for further modifying. Now, I actually shot this entire episode of the Sky Panel at my sponsor, it's Insert Stage, located in Parsippany, New Jersey, and a big shout out to Lewis over at M Squared Studios for having me in to play with this light. Uh, he actually owns a couple of these along with a lot of other gear, uh, and they're located within the Manhattan Zone in just 30 minutes from Midtown, where they offer discounted or free delivery rates for your production. If you have any questions on what you see in today's episode, or maybe you're looking for a rental quote, seriously, I had a great time over there, and I know you will too. You can visit them by heading over to their website at www.msquaredstudio.tv, or you can check out their Instagram page where they are consistently uploading new content. All things aside though, Ari, you guys killed it with this light. I can't wait to see what you guys have planned in the future. I was always curious to mess around with this light because it seems like the industry just went nuts as soon as you guys had released this. And now I totally see why. Seriously, good job over there. I wish I had the the cash to buy one so that I could spoon with it at night. But that's all I have for you guys today. I'm starting to run out of uh, t-shirts, but I do still have quite a few available. So make sure to head over to my website and grab one of those as they do support the channel. Uh, Patreon is also another way to help support the channel. And uh, you can also hit that thumbs up and like today's episode. And lastly, subscribe and hit the alert bell so that whenever I release an episode, you'll get notified. But until I do, we'll see you on the next one. Dreamer!